Hello. Uh, welcome back to uh, the Isichna program. This is Professor Umar Rao bringing you the lectures on transmission and uh, distribution under the Isichna program of BTO. So, in the previous sessions, we saw about SAG. So, SAG is the bend which is caused in a line because of its own weight. And uh, we need to provide SAG. Otherwise, if the tension is very high, it's likely that the line will snap. So, to prevent that, some SAG must be provided. And this SAG will determine the clearance which is required to be provided. And uh, we saw how to calculate SAG because of the weight of the conductor. When the supports are at the same height and when the supports are at different heights. So in this class, we will see the effect of wind and ice on SAG. So wind and ice are very common. Ice may not be there in all places. Wind to some extent is there and it may be more in some geographical locations and less in other locations. So we will derive the formula of how to account for wind and ice when we determine the sag. So remember one thing, what happens, I have a conductor, supposing there's a deposition of ice on the conductor. Obviously, the weight of the conductor will increase. The weight of the conductor will increase. That's one direct consequence of ice. Now, what will wind do? Wind will try to give a lateral force to the conductor. So you have to account for these when you calculate the sack. So ice, snow, hail, storm, all these different forms of ice, they all form on the overhead conductors. And it acts in the same direction, in the vertical plane, because it is, it is deposited on the conductor. So it acts in the same direction as the conductor weight. And uh, we have to determine what is the vertical load the structure must withstand when there is ice. So the ice is considered as a load because it increases the weight. Now, we determine the maximum transverse loads on structures by ice loads and we have to amalgamate integrate it with wind loads. And if we consider both of them at the same time, there are locations across the world where you have heavy ice and also winds. Now, how does the conductor weight per unit length change? So these things we will be seeing. Now, let us have a conductor. This is a cross section of a conductor. The center circle is the conductor. And for simplicity, I assume a uniform ice around the ice coating around the conductor. Here, I assume a uniform. So I have a conductor. So around the conductor, I assume a uniform coating. So supposing D is the diameter of the conductor and T is the thickness of ice. And uh, I need to find out what is this volume, the volume of the ice. Then if I multiply it by the density, I will get the weight of the ice. So now let me consider, you remember in our equations for SAG, we used weight per unit length. So I will consider again the same effect of ice and wind per unit length. So the cross section area of ice would be the total diameter. That is the total diameter would be D plus 2T because I have T on the left and T on the right. So if you look at the outer circle, the diameter of the outer circle is D plus 2T, right? Minus the diameter of the inner circle. Here. So I have the area of cross section I need of ice, the area of cross section of ice. That would be pi by 4 into diameter of the outer circle squared. So area is pi d squared by four. So diameter of the outer circle 
squared minus diameter of the inner circle squared. So d plus 2t whole squared minus d squared into 1. What is this 1? I want the volume. So I have the area of cross section. I take one unit length. Clear? So that would be the area of cross section into 1 would be the volume. Volume into density will give me the weight. Clear? So the weight of the eyes, so this is per unit length, is equal to density of eyes into, so I can simplify this term. Phi t into d plus t. Phi t into d plus t. So this weight will directly add to the weight of the conductor. This weight will directly add to the weight of the conductor. It's as if the conductor weight has increased by w i. Has increased by w i. Next, let us take wind. So the force of the wind is assumed to act horizontally at right angles to the surface of the conductor. So like this everywhere no? surface of the conductor it's assumed to act at right um, right angles clear again i have d and i have a coating of ice also which is there t so supposing w w subscript is the force of wind per unit length then what would be the force that would be the pressure per unit area into projected area per unit length Right? So I have the wind pressure per unit area. If I multiply it by the, so it is on the surface, the wind acts on the surface. So for unit length, what is the projected surface area? I need to find that. Into the pressure will give me the force of the wind per unit length. So now you look at this. So the wind will be impingent. So this is my section. So this total length is d plus 2t into 1. That will give me the surface area. Okay. So d plus 2t is into 1. So the force due to the wind is equal to the wind pressure into d plus 2t into 1. And the wind pressure itself will depend on the shape of the conductor, the velocity of the wind and maybe other atmospheric uh, conditions. So this acts tangentially. So you see here the weight W of the conductor and the weight due to I's WI both act vertically downwards and the wind force acts horizontally at 90 degrees WW. Therefore, so I have a conductor, the wind force acts horizontally and the weight will have a force vertically downwards. So the net weight, the net force is WT, okay? And this will make an angle theta. This will make an angle theta with the vertical. This will make an angle theta with the vertical. So what is that? Very simple. So WT, it's a right angle triangle. So W plus WI whole square, these two act in the same direction. And, and the force due to the wind acts laterally. So that will be W square. So this is the equivalent total weight of the conductor per unit length. Weight of the conductor per unit length. And tan theta is WW divided by W plus WI. So here remember theta is the angle made with the vertical along the direct with the direction of the weight of the conductor. Now we know the uh, formula for the sag. So the sag in any conductor is given by S. Wt L squared by 2t. We have derived this. Y is equal to Wx squared by 2t. We have derived that in the uh, session on first session on sag. So this is the sag of the conductor. And I need the vertical sag, the vertical sag. So see here, the sag is along the Wt. So the vertical sag will be S cos theta. The vertical sag will be S cos theta. So the formulas are very simple, no complicated formula here, right? In essence, wind and ice both will increase the sag, will increase the sag because WT is definitely greater than W. Now let us see one or two simple problems. So I have the following data. An ACSR conductor has the following data. Tensile strength is equal to 1000 kg. 
factor of safety is four. Copper area is hundred mm square, and size is equal to fifteen plus four by five mm. Weight is equal to zero point two kg per meter, and span length is equal to hundred meters. Now let's see what is the meaning of this notation. Size is fifteen plus four by five mm. So this denotes an ACSR conductor. This is the way we write it for ACSR conductors. So it has fifteen aluminium strands, okay, and four steel strands. Steel is for reinforcement, and each strand is of five mm diameter. Okay, so totally I have nineteen strands. Nineteen strands. And the number of layers is found by using this equation. N is equal to three n squared minus three n plus one. This is the formula. We saw this in conductors. So here n is the total number of strands, and this lower case n is the number of layers. So in my case, n is equal to nineteen. So by solving for this equation, I get n is equal to three. So there are three layers. Three layers. These nineteen strands are in three layers. Now the effective diameter of the conductor is given by this formula. The effective diameter is equal to two n minus one into d, where this d is the diameter of the individual uh, conductors. So that is equal to. So here two into n is three number of layers minus one. Into five, so five into five, twenty-five mm or two point five centimeters. This is the diameter of the conductor. D to compute the sag. Yeah. So I took up this problem just to get you familiarized with the way we we uh, uh, standardly mention or specify the stranded conductors. Next T, the tensile strength is thousand. It's already given to you. So factor of safety is uh, four. So T is equal to two fifty kg. Now the stag is still a S is equal to W L squared by H D. So the span length is hundred. The span length is hundred. Okay. So W is point two. The weight of the conductor. Is 0.2 kg per meter, and I told you ensure that this W and T have the same units. So this is in kg. This is also in kg per meter. So it's fine. So W is 0.2. L is span length is 100 meters. Uh, so 100 square divided by 8 into T is 250. So this is equal to one meter. The sag is one meter. Now let's see what happens. Uh, Next, so what happens when uh, the conductor is covered with 0.7 centimeters of thick ice with an ice density of 907 kg per meter cubed? This 917 is more. If you don't know what it is, 917 is the kg per meter cubed. Is you can use it. You know, water is 1000 kg per meter cubed. So the density of ice is slightly lesser. I think in physics you would have studied. That is why ice floats on water. Right. So, if no data is given, you can use nine hundred and seventeen kg per meter cube as the density of ice. So, I know the sag is one meter without ice. Now, with ice, let's see what happens. So, the weight of the ice is uh, we have already derived this formula: density of ice into pi t into d plus t. Density of ice, the unit is correct, kg per meter cube. So, nine hundred and seventeen into pi. And thickness is 0.7 centimeters, so I convert it into meters. That's why I have multiplied it by 10 to the power of minus two. And d is uh, 2.5, and t is 0.7 into 10 to the power of minus two. So the weight of the ice is 0.645 kg per meter. You can see how high it is, and 0.7 centimeters is not much. It's very common, but look at the weight. How many times it has increased? Right, the weight of the conductor is 0.2 kg per meter. So this weight of the ice is three times that of the conductor. So you see the sag. If you get it's 4.2 to 5 meters, heavy sag. You know the catenary 
point will be very high, the least point. Without ice, it was one meter. And now with ice, it is 4.225 meters, which is very high. Now let us take wind with it. So what is the vertical and total sag if the conductor is covered by uh, ice as before? And I have a wind pressure of 10 kg per meter square. So the weight due to the wind, the force due to the wind is D plus 2T into P. D is again 2.5. P, uh, T is 1.4, it's 0.7, so 2T is 1.4, into 10 to the power of minus 2, this is to convert the centimeter to meter, into 10. So the wind force is 0.39 kg per meter. Okay, so now the total weight is given by root of, we have this, so the total weight is 0.93 kg per meter. And theta, that is the angle the total force makes with respect to the vertical is 24.77 degrees. And sag is equal to same thing, WL squared by HT, it works out to be 4.65 meters. 4.65 meters. And the vertical sag, vertical sag is S cos theta, and this is 4.34 seven so slightly more than the ice so you see without ice or wind it was one meter with ice it was 4.225 with ice and wind it was 4.347 so from this you can see that ice has a predominant impact on sag as compared to wind as compared to wind okay okay next let us see one more problem I have a transmission line. It has a span of 150 meters between level supports. That means the two supports are at the same height. And the conductor cross-section area is two centimeters square. The tension is 2000 uh, uh, kgs. And specific gravity of copper. These are all different ways the data will be given. That's why I have used data in different ways in the examples. So the specific gravity of copper is 9.9 .9 grams per centimeter cubed and wind pressure is 1.5 kg per meter. Calculate the sag and vertical sag. So uh, there is no ice here. You only have wind. Let us see. So L is 150 meters, the span length. T is 2000 kg. This is the tension itself. It's not the tensile strength. So please remember when you use the word tensile strength, it's the ultimate tensile strength. You have to divide it by the factor of safety to get tension. Here, the tension itself is given. Now, I need to find out the weight of the conductor per, vol per meter. So it is the specific gravity into volume of one meter of conductor. Okay. So that is 9.9 .9 into the cross-section area is 2 centimeter squared, 2 centimeter squared. So 2 into 100. So one meter is 100 centimeters. So this is in centimeter. This is in uh, uh, centimeter. And uh, this is 9.9 .9 grams per centimeter cubed. Right? So I get 1980 grams per meter. And that is 1.98 kg per meter. That is the weight of the conductor. Weight of the conductor. So the wind weight is 1.5 kg per meter. The conductor weight is 1.98 kg per meter. Therefore, the net weight is 2.48 kgs. And the sag is same thing, WL squared by 80. It works out to 3.48 meters. And theta is tan inverse of WW by W uh, I plus W. But here I is zero, WI is zero. So it is tan inverse of 1.5 by 1.98. And I get the vertical sag is 2.77 meters. 2.77 meters. Next, we'll take one more example. A transmission line has a span of 275 meters. The conductor diameter is 1.96 centimeter and it weighs 0.865 kg per meter. The ultimate strength is 8060 kgs. 
and the factor of safety is two. There is a uniform ice coating of 1.27 centimeter thickness and the wind pressure is 3.9 grams per centimeter square. Calculate the sag if weight of ice of one cc is 0.91 grams. So the weight of ice is 0.91 grams per centimeter cubed or that would be 910 kg per meter cubed. Clear? So please be very careful with conversions. Please be very careful with conversions. So L is equal to 275 meters. T is 4030 kgs. And uh, diameter D is uh, 1.96 centimeters. And P is 1.27 meters. And the weight of the conductor WC is 0.865 meters. This is all the data you have here. Now, volume of ice per meter, that is 400 centimeters, the volume will be pi t. Then we have this pi t into d plus d into 100. So that is pi into t is 1.27. I'm doing everything in centimeters. And d is 1.27 plus 1.96 and one meter is 100 centimeters. So the volume of ice per meter is 1288 centimeter cubed. Okay, and now the weight of the ice is 0.91 grams per centimeter cubed. So it will be 0.91 into 1288 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, if I divide it by 1000, I'll get it in kgs. I'll get it in kgs. So this is grams. Okay. Into thousand. Divide by thousand. I'll get in kgs. So what am I doing? Gram per centimeter cubed into volume in centimeter cubed. So the centimeter cubed will go off. will give you the total weight in grams for one meter. And I convert it into kg. So the weight of the ice is 1.172 kg. Next. The wind pressure is 3.9 grams per centimeter squared. So wind total force would be pressure into D plus 2T into 100. 100 again because 1 meter is 100 centimeters. So 3.9 is the pressure. The pressure is in correct unit. It's in grams per centimeter square into D. D is 1.96. T is 1.27 into 100. So this will give me in grams. I divide by 1000 to get it in kgs. Okay. So if you see, I have included different set of units here. So you should be familiar. You should know how to convert from one unit to another. So now I have all the details I want. Then it is very simple. So the total weight is WC plus WI. Uh, sorry, there's a bracket missing here, whole square, plus 1.755 whole square, that is 2.688 kg, and S is equal to WTL squared by HT, that is 6.3 meters. Okay, so uh, uh, in this session, we saw about the effect of wind and ice on sag, and you should realize that the impact of ice, the effect of ice is much more uh, prominent than that of wind. Right? And both of them, the impact is to increase the sag. Increase the sag. And we saw problems. So whenever you do the problem, be careful about the units. So you have unit for volume, you will have unit for area, and then so many things. Some are given in grams, some may be given in kg per meter, some may be given in grams per centimeter cube, grams per centimeter squared. So be very careful when you deal with the 